Daniel and I are going to present a bit about Zulu today. Who in here has heard about Zulu before? All right, did anybody use, I'm actually not talking about Zulu from Star Trek, but Zulu to CMS. Is it still the same number of people? <laughs> okay, um, did you use Zulu? Who's used Zulu before? Okay, just a handful, perfect. Because we're gonna show you the, like, the basics, um, all the basic concepts of Zulu today in the workshop. Um, before we start with the hands-on part, we wanna give you some like, rough overview over Zulu. Please excuse that the slides are in German. I noticed that half the people speak German anyway, but um, it's a lot of pictures too, so I think you should get the gist. Um, so Zulu is this guy, and we're talking about Zulu and all the people around him, basically, that support him. Uh, what is Zulu? Zulu is a CMS that is um, very open, very modern, and very fast. That was the title of the slide. So what does it mean? Um, Zulu is based on Symfony full stack. It's a Symfony full stack application. That means if you have used Symfony before, and if you're coding Symfony applications, then you know immediately how Zulu works. You, you've, like it, this directory structure, it's just what you expect. The command line is what you expect, almost. And um, so in general, it feels very familiar to any Symfony developer. That's one big bonus of this is all funky um, of Zulu. And there's a lot of buzzwords around Zulu. Um, maybe the most important things are Zulu is born right on the border between Austria and Switzerland and Italy and maybe also France and Germany. So that means most of the customers there, um, for them, uh, multilinguality is a very important requirement. So all the sites need to have at least like two or three different languages. And that's one of big, the big strengths of Zulu. So multi-language platforms are like uh, the perfect use case for Zulu. It's also a very, um, uh, a very good platform for multi-site CMS installation. So if you have different front ends for the same data um, that you want to manage in one CMS, that's something that you can do very well. Um, one thing that I personally really like is the UI, the backend UI. It's a JavaScript application, basically, that you use to uh, modify your data, which means it's not always a good thing, but in this case, it's also very nicely designed. And for uh, content managers, it's much nicer to work with and much more reactive and much faster than, um, you know, typo three, for example. Um, that's my opinion. That's, I think that's the most important key facts. And um, for an enterprise, there are different benefits. First of all, Zulu is open source. That means you can use all of Zulu without having to pay any license fees. But at the same time, Zulu is backed by a company, by an agency that uses it in its day-to-day -day proje projects. So um, you can be sure that Zulu won't die tomorrow or next month because there's an agency that actually needs it and that needs functionality and develops platforms for big clients uh, that need features. You know? So Zulu is very actively being developed on. Sometimes it's a bit hard from the outside to get all the stuff that is going on inside because there's a lot of stuff going on inside. Um, and I recommend you to, to check it out. Um, right, and for developers, one of the most important things that I already mentioned is Symfony. Um, another important thing, and I think we're more talking about designers and, and, and content managers here, is that the way that Zulu manages data. So um, Zulu is a first class uh, application for, um, I'd say, multi-device um, applications. If you render a, a website on different devices, you often have the problem that um, if, a or if a content manager or designer maybe um, enters some content and then places or positions in an image in some position because that suits perfectly with the length of the text, as soon as you change the screen size, all of that is broken, right? So the more freedom you give to um, designers and content managers to change the visuals of the content, the more likely it is that the content or the, the visuals will break on other devices, right? So you need to find some way to give designers 
freedom to, to enter their content and to rearrange the content and, and reorder and reposition everything without breaking the output on mobile devices, for example. Right? And the way that Zulu works is very similar to Twig, basically. You have different blocks of a site, and these blocks are embedded in an HTML template. That's a simplistic version of explaining that. And um, you can have constraints. You can put constraints on these blocks, what kind of content uh, the content managers can put into these blocks. And um, you can also allow them, to some degree, to reorder blocks or reposition them, but with very strict constraints. So you still have control over where a content manager is allowed to do what. And then your designer can perfectly um, customize these uh, the HTML for or in CSS for different devices given those blocks. All right? Um, now, you probably think, well, another CMS. We have so many CMSs for, for PHP. That's true. And um, the analogy that the Sulu developers use for comparing Sulu with other CMSs is that of bicycles. Um, cars, trucks, and airplanes. All of those different vehicles, so to say, matters of uh, means of transportation, fulfill the same purpose, right? You want to get from point A to B. But the way, like all the, the context and all the, um, the environment variables, you just, so to say, change for these different means of transportation. A bicycle, for example, it's very lightweight. It's easy to use. You don't need any license or permission, right? You can just get one and, and, and drive. It's very cheap. So it's a very, very comfortable um, way of getting from one place to another. But it's not so comfortable to go long distances or to go long distances with um, maybe half of your house because you want to move to another place. So in the CMS world, um, we could compare bicycles to WordPress. WordPress is very easy to use, and it's, it's perfect for small to medium scale applications. People with lots of, uh, of plugins like Pods and stuff like that can, can create bigger websites as well. But there will be limits as to the capability of, of WordPress uh, when the sites grow. right? <clears throat> the next level that I mentioned were cars. I have no idea where the picture isn't rendered. Um, a car has already more strict um, requirements than a, than a bicycle. You need a license to drive one, for example. But you can also drive faster, you can drive longer, and you can drive with more people, and you can even transport some stuff. So it's a different kind of, different league than a bicycle, right? And um, the Sulu developers see basically um, type of three, for example, in that league, when we speak about CMSs. So you can do very like good platforms already. The next one would be might that be a UTF eight problem? I think so. The next one would be a truck, as you can clearly see on the picture. Uh, <laughs> a truck is already bigger. You need a special permission. You need a special license to drive a truck, but you can transport tons of of, of goods, right? So. Uh, it's much, much more powerful, and that's about where Easy, Pub uh, Easy Publish and Sulu would be. So, also Easy Publish and Sulu require a lot, require developers to uh, to configure the platform. You can't just install it and then have somebody use the interface and click everything together. Something that is possible with WordPress, right? So you need to have a developer, but the result is very highly customized to the client needs, right? And then the last one, clearly, is the airplane. Um, and there you would see uh, something like hybrids or um, yeah, open text, those big Java enterprise CMS platforms where you have to pay like, like huge license fees that basically do everything you need, but probably no middle scale enterprise can afford for one of these licenses. Um, yeah, CMS again, what the fuck? Maybe some buzzwords about Zulu. It's um, Symfony. I mentioned that it's PHP CR in the background. Something I didn't mention before. Who has heard about PHP CR before? Just some. All right. So PHP CR um, is an adapter to 
a Java standard, standard for content management, which is called the JCR, Java Content Repository. Um, in the gist, a couple of people, I don't know, 10 years ago, got together from the Java world and, and uh, very intelligent people and tried to find a design for a, a content model for storing all kinds of content. And they uh, drafted this specification, which was published, I don't know which number, but it's the JCR, Java Content Repository. And later on, PHPCR um, developed an adapter for PHP. Basically, you can use the Java implementation through PHP interfaces. And there, uh, later on, there also were um, doctrine implementations that were added. So you can use this PHPCR content model and store it in a doctrine database. Zulu uses that together with the Symfony content management framework, some components that build up on that PHPCR. And I think it's a very nice thing. Um, another password, you can customize the front end of your CMS completely. It's a Symfony application, I mentioned that, so it's all Twig templates, and all the Twig templates are completely customizable. You can have control over every single tag in your um, HTML front end. So, um, I'll show you a bit about the architecture of Sulu. Um, the basic framework is Symfony, as I mentioned before, and the CMF, the Content Management Framework Components. This is basically an extension of Symfony to the content management side. It's a couple of components that deal specifically with content management, um, like a, um, a routing component that um, maps content paths, like paths in a content tree, to paths in your URL. As data storage, we use PHPCR and Doctrine, and there's different adapters for, um, like MySQL, Check Rabbit is um, the Java implementation of the JCR. It's a repository. Um, anything that I'm wrong with, Daniel hopefully will jump and correct me. Um, and then you have different components of Sulu on top of those two layers um, for managing different kinds of data. So you have, um, you have different security modules, uh, modules for managing content, managing, modules for managing media assets like images, um, for managing person, personal information of any like persons, it's called contacts here, and, and so on and so forth. Um, we'll show you more about that later on. The installation is quite straightforward. Actually, that one is not even up to date anymore because we made it even simpler. Um, as of Sulu uh, 1.3, there's a new kind of Sulu standard edition. It's like the Symfony standard edition, but it's called Sulu Minimal. Um, it's called Sulu Minimal because it's the, the minimum bare bone application skeleton that you want to use for an application um, with Sulu. So it, it contains just the files that you need to get started. Is it recommended to use the minimal version instead of the standard version? Yes. As of, uh, as of Sulu 1.3, that's recommended. Um, and we will look at that later on. Sulu is highly based on XML configuration. And people will go, ah, XML, run away. No, it's actually very nice because you have schema validation, something that you can do to some degree with um, JSON as well, and YAML not really. Um, and these XML files, we will also look at them later are uh, used to um, configure, for example, the page templates. So the stuff that I told you about blocks, like your page being based on blocks that have different kinds of content, all these blocks are, in that case, defined in an XML file for one specific page type. So you can have different page types. They're called templates in Zulu. You can have different page types um, for different kinds of, of pages with different kinds of content, right? One where you have blocks of text and then an image and then more text. One for maybe a media gallery um, and so on and so forth. And for each of these templates or page types, you have your own XML file in which you define what kind of content um, can be stored on that kind of page and um, what kind of data those content types have and what kind of blocks are there and so on. And then for such an XML file, you have uh, the corresponding Twig template where you take all the data that has been stored on a page with the structure defined in the XML, and then you can just render the HTML with all the data of the content of the page. 
Um, you will see more XML later on. Um, the administration is very nice. That's the screenshot of the admi administration interface. You will see more later on uh, when you try it yourself. Um, and Sulu itself comes without any front end template. So there's no themes, maybe yet, like in WordPress, where you have different themes that you can't just download and they work. So all the HTML at the moment has to be written by you, and which is also, I think, a good thing because you can tailor it specifically to the needs of your clients. Of course, that's not the cheapest version if you have just a very small website because then you need to do a lot of work yourself. All right. Um, the rest of the presentation is more about integration of Sulu in a Symfony application. I think it's probably more interesting to get started now because that's already more in-depth information um, and to, to look at Sulu yourself, All right? Any questions so far? Cool. I'll hand the microphone to Daniel. So um, thank you, Bernard, for the theoretical background you will need in the hands-on workshop we're doing now. Uh, has everybody the virtual machine running? I hope so. Uh, then you should check if you can access sulu.websc slash admin and you should see our login page. And there you can log in with admin and the password is also admin. I'll just give you a minute to see if everything works and if there are any problems, just ask for help. Is that working for everybody? Admin. What you have here is a copy of the Sulu Minimal Edition uh, and with just a few adaptions that it runs properly in a virtual machine and we've also added uh, jQuery and Bootstrap in the front end so that you have some ground to start. So if you just go to sulu.websc, you should see a, a quite empty home page. Uh, and it's the first task to fill this home page with some content. Uh, therefore, you'll see we have a, an assignments folder. Uh, we've prepared nine assignments, and the first one we're going to try to do now. The idea is to add a header image to a home page. Uh, you can just search one in Google Image Search uh, and display it on the website. Uh, what you have to do, therefore, is uh, add a new property to our template, which is located at App, Resources, Templates, Pages, and here's the home page XML. Uh, and you'll also have to touch the Twig template in App, Resources, Views, Templates, Homepage.html.twig. Uh, yeah. Try it and ask for any help if something is not clear or is everything clear? <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, what we're building is uh, like a website for an event agency which is handling some events and has some artists on a, uh, in contract. And yeah, so maybe such a picture of a, from a crowd at a concert would be a nice image for the home page. So if there are any questions, just ask me or Bernhard. Uh, so just take a simple image. Download it. And we add this one property to the home page. And 
then we should see this header selection. If I have the did anybody have these permissions problems? Yeah, okay. Actually, it doesn't matter which section you put it. Uh, it only defines the place where it is uh, located in the UI then. So it doesn't matter if you put it in the section or outside of the section. It's just what you want to achieve. So now you see the header image there, but in order to select something, we first need to create a collection. A collection is just like a folder where you can put images in. So we create a header collection. Upload the image. And then it can be selected on the home page. And we have to save and publish the changes so that we can actually read the value on the Twig template. So in Twig, we can now, what I usually do is you can just dump the content object and then you see what you have available. So there's this media object and I see, okay, here's a URL, uh, which it's probably a little bit small. Um, which you can use now in the in an image tag. Let's put it on top. So was it? Header, we are only accessing the first, first one and using the URL for the source. And now we already see the header image. Uh, what's the first thing you're seeing here? It doesn't really match the design, <laughs> so it's, it's far too wide. Uh, so the next task is to change this, and therefore we're going to use a uh, Another feature of Zulu, uh, which is about the thumbnail configuration. So you'll find a file in the examples folder with image formats. You just copy it over to the right location, which is app resources, no, uh, sorry, app config image forms.xml, and you define a matching format, with, which is 1140 pixels wide and 450 pixel high. And they're gonna try to use this image format in the in the Twig template. Is it a uh, task clear to everybody? Or maybe I could push the this change.
what the hell's going on here? So if you do a git fetch, you get the assignment slash zero one branch with these changes, and you can continue to work from there. Any questions about the second assignment? Okay. Uh, so another thing, uh, you don't usually use this bin console because on uh, so wait a sec. Uh, uh, because we have two different kernels. There's one kernel for the website, and there's one kernel for the admin. So we also have two different consoles. If you want to run the command in the admin kernel, you have to use bin admin console, and for the website, you have to use bin website console. Okay, since most people have already managed to introduce a new image format, I'm going to show the solution. Uh, we can use this image formats example in this examples folder. Put it to app slash config. And we just adapt the parameters to our dimensions, adjust the name. And if PHP Storm wouldn't hang, no. Uh, we can use the thumbnails property here. And this is an array where we can pass the name of the, of the image format. Then we should clear the cache because a new file has been added. And then hopefully the new image format should be used, but it isn't. Yeah. No. It's always a help to use dump. There's something else wrong. We just Yeah, it's some caching issue. That's strange. Yeah, I think that's the only problem my machine. I don't want to bother you with it. Uh, we think just talk about the next assignment. Uh, now we want to add a navigation to our website. 
because without a navigation, the website will pretty useless. Um, therefore, we just add a few pages to the main navigation, which already exists, and then you have to display the navigation on the website in the Twig template. There's already a file prepared uh, under examples, main navigation.html.twig. Is the task clear to everybody? Okay, yeah, I'll just show it and we'll see. So, uh, first of all, we have to add a few pages. So, let's call them events. And in the Actually, I could, should switch to English. So, in the settings tab, we can choose in which navigations this page should appear. In our case, we only have the main navigation, and that's the place where we want to locate it. Uh, at the moment, we won't see it because we haven't added the required functionality in the Twig template. So, just take the main navigation from the example. And put it into a master template, which all the other templates extend from. So, we've got... Uh, So what this is doing is it's rendering a, a home page link uh, which we will check if the template is the home page then we know this is the active page and it should be highlighted in some way with the which is done by the active class here. Uh, then there's the Zulu navigation root flat method uh, which we pass the navigation context which is main in our case and it will return a list of all navigation items. We loop over these items, check again if it's active and add this class, uh, and here we generate the link. Therefore, we need this Zulu content path method, uh, which will add a prefix in case it's necessary. For instance, if we have the localization as a prefix. Uh, and then we add the title. And that's basically it. So here we see we have the home page and the events in our navigation. So we're going on with the next task, where we're going to add our first page. Uh, we want to add an events page uh, because as Said this is the main thing of our website, and would like to show a list on this events page. Therefore, we're going to use the smart content, which is used to aggregate different source data sources and to make it possible to load all these different events we have and show it on the event overview page. Um, I think we can go through the solution uh, for the assignment four with the smart content. Uh, it's, um, some of you have run into a few troubles, but I think more or less everybody managed it. It's so we've got this template here, and. What some of you have done is to delete these pr certain properties. Uh, I didn't mention it 
the title property, for instance, is mandatory. So we need a title to show in the column navigation, for instance. And we also need a URL. Uh, this field can also have a different name. The important thing is that there's one property which has this tag, sulu.alp, that we know this is the resource locator. And uh, with this, we can generate the URL. Uh, we've simply added a events property uh, of the type smart content. And in the events HTML tweak template, uh, we just loop over content.events, which will contain all the, in, uh, all the pages we have selected via the smart content, and output the URL and the title for it in a list. So if we switch here to the events template, the smart content appears, and we can choose a data source. Before we take this, uh, yeah, the page itself, so it will do a query containing all the sub pages of this page. Actually, you can decide if you want to have only the next level or the entire tree below. Uh, and if we apply this change, we already see the the events we have to have added to <laughs> Austrian festivals. If we save and publish that, we should see the list on the website. And they're already linked to the certain page. Uh, and this page is the part of the next assignment. So in the next assignment, we want to add some more content to this event pages, uh, like a start and end date and a location, because it's the important thing for a for an event. Uh, then you also have to adapt the Twig template and change all the existing pages, for me it's just two, to this new event template and yeah, show some more information on the website about it. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um, so the property, uh, this tag, indicates that this property is somehow special. Uh, in this case, it's uh, telling the system that this is the resource locator. The resource locator is this part of the URL at the very end, which Sulu has under control. So what you enter in this uh, property will be the URL on the website. So that's basically it. And then you've also got this sulu.lp.part. Uh, this one is used for generating a a suggestion for the URL. So if you enter the title, it will take the title, uh, normalize it, and fill it automatically in as a URL. I think you've already seen that. So that can be controlled by this sulu.lp.part. Anything else? Yeah, you can have multiple parts, and then when you fill out all of them, they're just concatenated.
I think most of you have already finished this exercise, so we go quickly through it. It was basically just adding a new XML template uh, containing the same highlight section as the others and having the start date, end date and location properties. The date of course being of type date and the location a location. Um, we have We've already created these pages previously, so we have to change the template now. And we have to clear the cache before that. Now it should appear. Yeah, here it is. Uh, we can choose a date with the date picker. And yeah, sadly there's a Google Maps wants a key that has already worked. I don't know why it broke now. But what we can still do is uh, give the con a location a title. I know, I think this one is in Nailing some street and stuff. Uh, I can say this in Austria. We can save and publish the page, and now we should be able to see the content. Here, yeah, exactly. It's the two dates, not very nicely formatted, but still. And the title of the location we've entered. Uh, Twig Trample is pretty straightforward. It's just start at end date, and from the location, we take the title. So, the location object contains all the fields we have configured in this overlay. Uh, as mentioned in the assignment, you could also use uh, some date filters here. Yeah, all the kind of Twig stuff you already know. Um, so, it's just go to push this for you. I think another thing that's nice about the location content type is that that's not working for anybody in here. But usually you see a little Google map in there and you can, um, you can zoom in on a specific location. So if you search for a place, then it will actually contact Google and um, place a marker at the location that it finds, at the address, for example. And you can move the, the marker around on the map and zoom in and zoom out and select the zoom level and stuff like that. So it's a very nice way to actually configure um, a Google map that will be displayed on your website. So, the next uh, assignment. Yeah? Um, I think it even is one, isn't it? Okay. No, this is not a design decision, to be honest. <laughs> I thought it is a date. Yeah, seems like I've been wrong. So with the quick date filter, you can form it in any way, because it will recognize date form. So um, for the event list, it would be nice to have more information available, like the start date and end date of the event. It would be nice to see it on the on the overview page already. Uh, so what you have to do is to tell the smart content which properties it should already load because it doesn't load all of them for performance reasons. So you have to define which properties have to be fetched. And you can do that via this properties parameter. I think here's the link to the documentation where you can 
read that up. And yeah, I suggest you try to show the dates in the overview. Any questions? Um, you can't bulk change the templates. It's not possible because you would have to, if you change the template, you also have to change some of the content. So uh, another idea was to tell that under this certain template, it's only other templates are allowed. So that you can say uh, under the events template, only the event template should show up. But it's not implemented. And yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. We can quickly run also through the six assignment. Um, all we had to do was to add this properties parameter in the smart content uh, and load the start date and end date. And in the name of the parameter, we define under which name it should be accessible in the Twig template. So it should be enough to add these two parameters. And uh, in the Twig template, we can then access exactly these parameters should be here so it's already working that way and what we can see here is that the elements which were not existing are just returning null so if the content manager chooses some pages and the uh, front end developer said i want to have these uh, properties there the page will not break We'll just return null. So that's about it from the six assignment. You have a question? So it's about this part. I can also push the changes for you. Do you still need it? Yeah. So the next assignment is also about the smart content. That we want to use the accept feature of Zulu. The accept is an own tab in the administration. And it's fought for exactly these use cases where you want to have a standardized set of fields for every template. So if you use a smart content, you can also always use these excerpt fields here, like the text or the description. You can ensure that every page at least has one. And the content manager can also decide in more detail what he wants to show on the overview page. Maybe even a different text if he wants to do that. 
So the idea is hmm? we just want to use these excerpt information in the smart content or in the rendered smart content on the website. Any questions? Okay. Now that you're rendering the smart content with the links to all your um, events or whatever you have, uh, you probably realize that it's not sufficient to just output the URL to uh, the event, but you need to use the Zulu underscore content underscore path function because that function also includes um, the language, the localization in the URL, uh, depending on your configuration. Right. So. If you have just one single language, then you can use all the URL properties. But as soon as you have more than one language or localization, you always need to use the Zulu content path uh, function to render a path to some other content. Seems as most of you have tried to finish this exercise. Um, again, quickly, the solution: uh, we had another two parameters in the smart content, uh, naming it except title and except description. And the value is title and description are the names in the except tab, and this except is the except tab. There are also other extensions like you could load SEO information here from the SEO tab. And in the Twig template, we can simply use that except title like we have used the other fields. We're also using the default filter from Twig here to have a fallback on the usual title. So that is not empty if the content manager doesn't fill this field. The same thing for the description. Uh, here we need the raw filter because the description is a rich text editor, so it also contains some markup, and Twig would escape it in case we don't switch the raw filter or another possibility we do it like up here with the auto escape notation. Any questions about that? And we can switch to the next task. Uh, we already have a main navigation, but on many websites it's usual to also have a footer navigation with a different kind of links or a different set of links. And we're trying to add such a navigation in on our website. So what we have to do for that is to add it to our web, uh, web space configuration file, which is again XML. And after we've done that, we can add the pages to this navigation context. And in the Twig template we have actually the same method call, like the Zulu navigation root flat. We just exchanged the uh, key here, which yeah can be is will be defined in the WebSpace configuration file. Is that about clear?
I think everybody has man uh, managed to get a photo navigation on the website. So, also a short explanation. Uh, in the WebSys configuration file, we add one context, uh, saying it's a footer navigation. This is the key which identifies this navigation, which will be used in the Twig template later. And we've got this title, which will define how, yeah, how it is named in the in the UI. Uh, as we can see here, it's the same method called or the same Twig method as before. We simply say use the footer navigation this time, and this is the, the same way as before as the UL and with the title. Uh, so if we add an About Us page here, for instance, and we tell it to appear in the footer navigation, it should already work. And here it is. Do you have any questions about navigations? Okay, so we've already reached the last assignment where we try to add a second localization so that you can see the multilingual feature in in Sulu. You again have to touch the WebSpace configuration file. You can add another language, as Ger uh, German, Italian, French, whatever. Uh, and you also have to adjust the, the URLs down here. So these URLs say I'm on my, uh, this URL is the English language shown. And we'd like to change that. Uh, you can use placeholders or you can use a second URL tag here saying the other localization, but it's easy to use the placeholder, so I suggest you do that for the moment. So for all of you that are done already with the last assignment and want to do a bit more, um, you can look at the feature that we didn't include in the workshop. Uh, if you look at this URL here that I pasted, um, there's a documentation about a feature called content blocks. And content blocks are basically dynamic properties. Properties where, or sections of your page, where the content manager can freely add blocks by themselves and choose their type and reorder them so that they are a bit more flexible in designing the, the page, what it should look like. They're still constrained by you, but they have some more freedom than with the current way where everything is very static. Read the documentation, there's some, it's actually a pull request still, it's not in the documentation yet, but um, there's some pictures there as well that should explain everything. So I think we have to finish, five more minutes. Um, we'll still show the solution. Uh, we are, have added another language on the very top in the localiza localizations tag. Uh, and for the URLs, we have replaced this language, which looked like this before. We're simply removing it. and introducing this localization placeholder, which will yeah, work for every localization. So it's generating URLs for uh, sulu.webcas.en and for slash de. Uh, when we're doing that, we have to uh, reinitialize uh, our documents. Uh, this is just generating some base nodes for all the languages which have to be in the system. Um, 
the other thing we're doing is adding a localization changer or chooser. Let's see what it is. Yeah, here. So there's a URLs variable which contains all the URLs for the current page in all its localizations. So you can just loop over it and again use the Zulu content path method to get a uh, to get a URL. This time we are passing the local so that it's generating the URL for the other language. And in this case, we're just showing the the name of the local. So in this, we should already see his en de. The en link you should see it on the left bottom is locating to en about us, and the de link is just locating to only DE because this page doesn't exist in this language yet. Um, and yet that's another issue. <laughs> that's an error in our Twig template, but I want to go into details now. Um, so if we take this about us, I have to uh, I have to set the permissions first. So we don't have the permissions for this language yet. So we have to add it here. And then we can update this page in this language. Now the language chooser will cho uh, show to the right. No, okay then. Thank you for your time, and I hope you like Sulu. <laughs>